Hi, my name is Logan McCarthy, and today we're going to talk about how to make clones of yourself in film, or clones of your friends as characters. I have learned a lot in the past few years, and I just wanted to share what I knew. So if anybody out there is interested in doing the same technique, um, just know that some of the things I'm going to talk about are a little unconventional, um, actually really unconventional. And while I don't feel as though everything I've done has been correct and it has been the right way to pull off this kind of technique, it has been good for me to learn from all the mistakes that I have made to ultimately get to the point where I am now. So this video is obviously going to talk about all of this and I hope you enjoy. I started in a trade school, uh, well, elementary school, middle school, you know. I went to a high school too, which is cool. Yeah, so I went to Tri-County Regional Vocational Technical High School. It was a bit of a long name, but we just shortened it to Tri-County or just Tri. And what was great about Tri-County was that they had A weeks and B weeks. So you would switch. The A week would be your regular academics, and B week would be a week for your shop, which is basically a trade. And they had lots of different trades. They had engineering, they had computer info systems, they had graphic communications, which is the one that I went into. One of the techniques that we started learning was called image sequencing. As I remember it, it was an automated process. So in Photoshop, it was a certain script they had to run. The camera had to be very still. If it moved just a little bit, it wasn't going to work. You would get this really cool picture of multiple selves in the same shot. And I thought, oh, that's, that's really cool. But at the, I didn't think much of it at the time. I just thought, that's really neat. Later on, we learned about another technique called wear masks. A wear mask is that little rectangle with a circle in it that you see at the bottom of the wear's palette. You apply a wear mask to a wear. If you paint with black on a wear mask, you take away the image on the wear. And if you paint with white, you bring it back. And that's why I always use wear masks instead of an eraser. Once you file save it, you close out of the document, you get it back open again, and you wanted to make a change where you wanted to get some of that image area back, you can't do that if you use the eraser because it's gone now. But if you used a wear mask, you can always go back and edit that. So I really recommend wear masks. Wear masks are awesome. Senior year, I had this awesome history teacher named Mrs. Grace. And Mrs. Grace gave us a, a history assignment on King Louis the 14th's life. So basically, we had a sheet of paper with eight panels on it. And we had to illustrate King Louis the 14th's life in all of these panels. So we had to draw them. At the time, I wasn't very good at drawing. I'm still not very good at drawing right now. And I just looked at this assignment. And I was like, I understand what you're trying to get at here. But I don't really feel motivated to do it right now. Something just clicked, and I realized, you know what, wait a minute. I could take that image sequence technique and do something with that. I didn't like the automated process because it felt so limited. What if the conditions aren't right? What if you wanted to do crazier and crazier things? I know it's just a photograph, but what if the script couldn't handle something that you wanted to do? The wear mask might be a way to avoid having to do the script entirely. But I had this little red Nikon camera. It wasn't a DSLR. It was just a little simple point and shoot. And I remember asking my mom if she could help t take these crazy multiple self photos all around the house. And I had never done these before on my own. And we went to a bunch of different rooms. There's a, like a, a guy with a bow and arrow in every shot, just for heckles. Afterwards, I put the technique to the test. So I opened them all up in Photoshop. I took one photo of me in one room, and that was its own wear. And then what I did was I either file placed another image of, the, of me in a different area of that picture, that's one way to do it. Or you open up that picture as its own document and go to where, duplicate where, and then from there you move it over to the other document that you want it in. Either way, you get two pictures in the same document. They're in different layers. And so here's the moment of truth. I put a wear mask on whichever wear was on top, and I painted black over the image area where the Logan on the other layer underneath would be. And I realized, wait a minute, I just came up with a better way to do this. This is, you don't have to do the script anymore. And I can now do more complicated stuff. I did it. This is really cool. Now obviously these, 
the photos for the movie, the 14th assignment, they weren't perfect. I was still trying to get used to the technique. I used a really big feathered brush, and I wasn't very patient with it. I was just getting really excited. So at some points, you can see around the edges of the Logans, you can see past them as if they're ghosts. I would have been able to fix that if I used a smaller and smaller feathered brush. But I was just so excited, I didn't think to do that. There was also an overlap problem that is really hard to fix. I had a Logan who had his hand resting on another person's hand. And if you think about it, in real space and time, both of their hands are con like making contact with the table, that same spot on the table. Physically, that is not a possible, that's not possible. You can't have two hands at, in that area in real space and time. I kind of fudged it. I just left it there. And in a way, it kind of looks like he's just awkwardly <laughs> resting his hand on somebody else's. But um, again, I was so excited. I didn't really care. I was, just, I, I was just trying things. This was a stage of experimenting and it was awesome. And I'm very happy to say that the photos didn't stop there. Um, actually, we did that as a holiday card that year too. So um, what was it? Uh, Christmas 2011. I had my family on the left side and the right side of the image, except we switched the dogs. Sparky's on the left side and Skippy's on the right side. My brother noted after I after we got it printed, hey, the the candle in the middle is kind of like shifting into a new dimension. There's like this weird, it didn't line up. If I really focused on it, I might have been able to find a fix for that, but we had already like printed out the holiday cards and we were sending them out, so like. I eventually just kind of took this technique and made it into my own, like, personal trademark. Like, I was the guy who did these photos at Tri-County. I shot these photos at school, in, like, classrooms and outside. I took pretend band photos, you know, we, we got a full piece band here. And I took photos on the roof. I had this really neat photo where I was able to mask myself in to the same shot where I was drop-kicking an oncoming car. And that was actually a really hard shot to do because that was on the highway. I went on the highway. I eventually got a DSLR and I had this really nice self-timer, but it was 10 seconds. So I had to really time it and hope that, well, I really hope that no car can see this part of the road in 10 seconds because I am about to drop kick nothing. I eventually figured out how to do panoramas. I shot Logan's on the west side, middle, right, and then I did it again. And then I did it again. And I don't think I had the middle in like one or two of the panoramas. Then I had three panoramas that were actually shaped all the same. I treated each panorama as its own layer in one document and just applied the layer masking technique, and there you go. You had a bunch of Logans in a panorama, and I thought this was the most innovative thing ever. Another really, really crazy one that I did was uh, I went to the church down my, at, down my street at 4, four o'clock in the morning and had a, a flashlight the dead battery <laughs> or it was a low battery or whatever but I went there and I took a photo of me sitting on the front steps of the church with the flashlight kind of like pointing and looking off this way and I actually waited there for three hours <laughs> for the sun to come up eventually the sun finally came up high enough and I took the second photo looking this way with the flashlight again and I was able to do this, like, cool flashlight, artsy, really artsy, kind of Gautier-like style thing. Um, and the end result was um, natural lighting for both pictures. Natural daylight and natural night light. I eventually got to changing clothes. One of my friends, uh, Matt Sansom, suggested, you should try changing your clothes for some of these pictures. Get more complicated. Uh, make, it, make, uh, make the illusion better by changing clothes and making different personalities. So I did, I tried it. I found a shopping cart outside one of the dorms. This is, at this time I was at Southern New Hampshire University, or as you like to call it, SNU, um, or SNHE, but we just call it SNU. Like, what's new in your world? I found a shopping cart outside one of the uh, Ossipi dorm. I had all these jackets and hats. I put them on, I had one guy sitting in the, in the cart, and it was just this like weird, like photo of a bunch of guys I wouldn't normally look like or act like, but I just had all these clothes because we been I don't know we went to Savers a lot and I collected hats so I already had this stuff, and I eventually turned those guys into a project called the Scumbag Turnies and it was great I had a fun time with that I would be cloning friends too I'd be offering my services for that 
So they'd be like, hey, Logan, can we do a multiple self thing? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> it was fun. I would take photos of friends in shop, outside of school, both at Tri-County and uh, Southern New Hampshire. It's just new. One of my math professors and uh, advisors for radio is new, David Cox, a wonderful guy. He had his phone and had a panorama app. And he made a panorama of me over here. And then he wait, swung it this way. And as he's swinging it this way, I ran behind him. This is his idea. I, w I got over there and had the same pose. And he moved it over there. And he made a successful panorama. And it was awesome. It's just great. And I'm like, yeah, somebody else did it. That was great. Other people, I love it when other people do the technique. Because I want to see more of it. Another really ambitious one that I did was Abbey Road by the Beatles. King Philip High School is also just down the road from me. We went there because they had a nice crosswalk. Um, we weren't going to do this in the middle of the street, but we were going to do a multiple cell photo, a parody of Abbey Road. I had my brother on camera and I had my mom on wardrobe. That photo was the first time I've ever worn jeans. It's also the only time I've ever worn jeans. I don't wear jeans. I wear dress pants. If you see them, they're really comfortable. So I don't wear jeans. But George Harrison in Abbey Road wears jeans, so I wore jeans, and they were women's jeans. Um, so I wore women's jeans for that photo. It's the only time I've worn jeans. I've never even worn men's jeans. I should probably do that. Paul McCartney was the hardest person to do for that one, because in the actual Abbey Road photo, Paul McCartney isn't wearing shoes. And it was a really hot day that day. It was blistering hot. So the cement, whew! That was terrible. I'm standing on a skillet right now. Instead of a cigarette, I had a pen. So there's a pen in that hand. The pants, they, my, they were my grandfather's or my great-grandfather's or something. And I don't, they were huge. They were like extra, 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 extra large. Like it was crazy extra large. They were so big, I couldn't fit the belt. You know how the belt goes through the loops around the waist? The pants would droop in between each loop and it was just impossible and I, I finally figured a way to like jerry rig these pants so they would stay oh it's just for the rest of them i'm just like gosh i felt fatigued of changing in the car it took an hour and a half to shoot it and an hour and a half to edit it and the shadows are a little iffy in some places but i the shadows are okay feet are sometimes a little weird between paul mccartney and ringo star but they're otherwise okay. And John Lennon's perfect. He's fine. I had eventually made so many of these that when I saw the, an announcement was made for the Adobe Design Achievement Awards, which are the ADAA, in 2012, I think? 2012? Yep. Yep, 2012. They had a photography competition. And I thought, I'm going to try and submit these to the photography competition. I took this really weird, like, I pretended to be like this elderly person sitting in a chair and looking off into the window. And it was just kind of like, Okay. It was okay. There are some other really cool things in there. I sent in these photos, but obviously I didn't hear back. I, I didn't really have much going for them. Like, I still had a lot of work to do on, the, on these techniques, I felt. Whatever. There were some particular photos um, that were really important milestones. I had this logger shot where I had taken all the photos, you know, for each, each Logan. And one of them was blurry for some reason. I'm not sure what happened, but one of them got really blurry. He wasn't, like, in the distance. He was in the middle of all of them. And all the other ones are in focus. And this one guy is blurry. And it just didn't look right. I couldn't sharpen it enough to make it look right. Quality is really important. Quantity, not so much. I was trying to put quantity in there. I should have put quality. I should have just taken that guy out. That would have been easy. It blurred the line between reality and illusion. What are we blurred? And actually made it to that, oh, that doesn't look right. And so I had to remember for future things, if I ever see that again, I have to make sure I reshoot that. It's gonna spoil the technique. The biggest multiple self photo I ever took was uh, in a hallway at Tri-County, right outside my shop. There were 24 Wogans in this hallway. Most of them were overlapping with other Wogans. And at this time, I still wasn't too good at the technique. And I'm trying really hard to like, do a smaller feathered brush and go around each, each one. There's so much overlap. And it literally took me two days to edit it. It probably took me about five minutes to shoot it, but it took me two days to edit this picture. One picture. And it only got two likes on Facebook. 
I was so disappointed. I started getting into some more really complicated ones uh, when I came to Snoo. I had done this one outside of my front doorstep, and it was the Three Wise Logans. It's like the Three Wise Monkeys. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And I was really, really lucky when I shot it the first time because they were perfectly spaced. It was a total accident, but they were perfectly spaced. It's just the same amount of little sliver of space showing in between each shirt uh, sleeve, each shirt sleeve. And I was in a digital uh, digital photography class with Professor Harry Human, wonderful, wonderful, crazy, cool teacher here at SNU. I wanted to try this technique again. And I actually went back to that photo and I had this idea, like, what if I could combine them all into one? So make it so that it was like a six-armed, a six-armed dude, you know? I had to stay very still. I had to use one face. I had to use one face for the whole thing. I was able to mask around each set of arms to do all the different things that I needed to do. It looked pretty seamless. It just took a lot of time and concentration, but I realized you can make really cool mind-bending overlaps like that. Like, those things are possible in a shot like that. Yeah, imagine if that was a moving shot, too. If those arms were actually moving and those image areas were actually, like, going with the, uh, the movements of those arms. Like, that'd be really cool. And that's not out of, you know, that's not impossible either. It's not impossible. Another one that I had done was a really clever illusion with an American flag. So it's a photo where particularly the main interest is there's two me's holding up this American flag, one on each end. In real space and time, how did I do that? I had my brother, Lee, um, on one side while we held it over there. And we, I think we tried to match the corners to where we were holding them, like by the wood or whatever. And then we switched places and we held it off over there. And I was able to Photoshop the flag, image area of the flag, all of one flag, all the way over, and make this, like, believable crease on the other side. And that crease is actually where the image area of the other flag comes in. We were able to make it seamless, and I was very, very excited. Like, wow, we did that. And that was the first time that I got into, like, coordinating where these objects, where these clones are going to be in real space and time. I'm gonna bring up one more photo that I shot in uh, the last chapter pub, which is the pub that we have on campus. There was this comedian who was there that night. His name was MC Mr. Napkins. He was funny. He was a great guy. He was great. He saw me taking pictures and um, he asked if I could take pictures of him posing and stuff. So I did right there and I had something going on in my mind. I'm like, wait a minute. He's moving all over the stage. I'm just going to try something, just because I was very curious. I was going to try to make it a multiple self photo of him. I don't have my tripod on me. I can't keep the camera very still. But I have good shoulders, so I tried. I just kind of like held it and tried to get all the photos that I needed. And so he went like, you know, and he'll move over. Or maybe I may have given him directions too. Go in the middle, do another one. Go to the right, you know, do another one or go to the left, whatever. Those came out great. Um, as individual photos and then I went into Photoshop right then and there I had my computer with me and I tried putting them together and of course The backgrounds didn't line up all the way, but I realized I could do something here I can still digitally because it's a picture I can digitally move All these pictures so that the backgrounds at least line up very closely and if I can manage to do that and the layer mask all of the um, image area so that you see all three of them. It should look pretty seamless, and it did. I was able to pull off this shot of MC Mr. Napkins without a tripod, which meant that there are tricks that you can do in this kind of technique to still make things happen.